Mm. Can you hear that? That buzz, that god awful sound? Yeah. I made a video about it, and we're fixing it right now. Let's let's get into talking about it. This this is not acceptable for the new Rode Wireless Go 2, but we got a solution. Hey guys, thanks for checking this video out. I'm back today to update you on a previous video I made about some of the problems that I was having with my new Rode Wireless Go 2. Now this was very surprising to me because the Wireless Go 1 was great and had no problems. And if you haven't watched that video, I'll put a link to wherever it is up here in the corner. I suggest you go ahead and check that video out real quick, then come back and finish watching this one because I think it'll make a little bit more sense. If this is your first time checking out my channel, thanks for stopping by. I'm the Tactical Traveler. I'm just a straight shooter who always tries to just tell it like it is. Unless otherwise stated, all of the gear that I ever talk about on my channel, I've either purchased with my own money or I've rented it with my own money. I definitely never will use affiliate links to try and drive you to buy stuff that you really don't need and that I'm never gonna use again just so I can get a little kickback from the company by you clicking on my affiliate link. That's just not the way I do things here. If this type of content or a channel like this interests you and you're frustrated with all of the usual suspects that do these reviews and just try and get you to hit their affiliate links, Maybe you ought to consider hitting the subscribe button to my channel and maybe even giving this video a thumbs up if you find it useful. When I posted my previous video, the support team from Rode actually reached out to me to try and help me solve the two problems that I was having with the, the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now the first problem has been highly reported from everybody and they understand it has to do with the ability to export uncompressed audio files from your transmitter using the Rode Central app. Some of you may not be aware, but that's all been resolved. There's been a, an update to the app. There's been a firmware update to these little devices, I can confirm that using the, if you've updated your Rode Central app, that this problem no longer exists. Boom, easy, done, Rode took care of that one within a week of it coming out. So the second problem I was having was a, just a little bit more complex, and it had to do with a very loud buzzing sound that I was experiencing when using my wireless Go 2, specifically when recording directly to an external recorder like my H6 that you see right here. For me, it didn't matter the brand or model of the recorder. I had the same results either way. So I noticed the problem was a lot worse when I used this new cable that came with my new Wireless Go 2. It's their memory cable and it's kind of cool and unique that it'll, it'll hold its shape. So if you're using your camera in a cage or you want it to be out of the way, it kind of it kind of is nice in that way that it stays out of the way. The problem wasn't as bad when I'd used the original red coiled cable that came with my original Wireless Go. It was, it was still there, but it was a lot less noticeable with that cable for some reason. So I thought the problem was the cable, but actually the answer had a lot less to do with the cable, and it had a lot more to do with the 3.5 millimeter inputs that are on these older uh, external recorders. Because when I plugged the wireless go directly into my camera, regardless of what cable I used, there was no issue at all. What this ends up coming down to, after I talked to the guys at Rode and, and kind of for my own little opinion was I believe that this is sort of like a clash of technologies, kind of like uh, baby boomers against millennials, if you want to know the truth. So this Wireless Go version 2 actually uses a 2.4 gigahertz technology to transmit a very powerful signal, and it allows for the incredible range. I'll show you guys a quick range test I did here. I won't, won't get long-winded in it. We'll just cut to that for a second and show you. I don't even know if you can hear me now. This is, at this point, this is absolutely ridiculous. If you can hear me now, there is no reason that I would ever be this far away from my camera. Matter of fact, if someone wanted to come up and steal my camera right now, I wouldn't be able to stop them. There's no way I can cover this distance. Recorders like this Zoom H6, the Zoom H1, the Tascam, they were released before technology existed that's in the recorders like this Rode Wireless Go 2. So they aren't necessarily shielded for the type of interference that they're gonna get with wireless signals coming from something like this, especially when you're talking their 3.5 millimeter jack. They weren't accounting for that when they designed this. There's nothing wrong with this recorder. There's nothing wrong with the wireless go too. They just were manufactured at two different times in history and technology changes so fast. So as a result of this, you know, I wouldn't say lack of compatibility, but just the different generations of technology, you're getting a lot of RF interference when you use a 3.5 millimeter jack. Now I'm definitely no expert on this stuff. I'm not a not even a really good audio guy. I think I'm kind of explaining it correct. It has to do with RF interference. Even with the coiled cables, if I would have stretched the cable out and made it long and straight like this, I would have got the same level of interference I was getting with this straighter cable. That 
If anybody here can explain it a little better, just leave a comment down below and help everybody else. So enough about what the problem was. You guys got it. It was a buzzing sound, right? So what's the solution? That's what you really clicked on this video to find out. Maybe you're having the same problem and you need to know the solution. Well, the team from Rode suggested this guy right here. I don't know if my Sony will pick it up or not, but this is the VXLR Pro. So this basically takes and converts a 3.5 millimeter into a XLR input because Devices like this were designed primarily to be used with XLR cables and XLR inputs, and they have much better shielding for their XLR inputs than they do on the, the 3.5, because honestly, this 3.5 millimeter input is just sort of an afterthought. Keep in mind, this is only if you want to record externally and you're experiencing the problem I'm experiencing with the interference. Maybe you won't have this problem and you don't need it. Enough jibber jabber. Let's go ahead and try this thing out. Let's plug it in and let's, let's get it going and see if we can get a better signal than what we were getting before. I'm excited to try this, let's try it. All right, first thing we're gonna do, let's put the headphones on and let's open this guy up. All right, we don't need that. It's got this little clip. Is this what I wanna wear it on my shirt pocket? A belt, a belt clip? I, somebody tell me what this belt clip is actually supposed to be used for. I don't think I need the belt clip. This thing's heavy, heavier than it looks. Hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this into input number three. And look at this cable. We're going to take, you guys see what I've got going on here? All right, here we go. So I've got this, this VXLR Pro into there, and then we're going to connect it here. No buzzing. Nothing. I'm gonna turn the levels up, so be careful with your speakers. It's at full power. I don't wanna to talk too loud and blow out your ears. I can do ASMR on this. All right, let me, whoa, 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 okay. Bring these levels back down to something that's a little bit more manageable here. I hope I'm not peeking now. Okay, problem solved, simple easy solution right here so if you if you have this issue let me get this box here that I destroyed this guy right here the XLR Pro problem solved no issue at all now you might be asking yourself what if I want to record to both of them because this is only going to allow you to get left or right channel and that's what we're on right now we're on this right here okay no no shenanigans this is what's happening but let's say now I want to have this one going so if I turn this guy on, this guy's on, this guy's not. So this, nothing, right? I'm split, I got nothing here. So how do we get audio and use two transmitters now? This is a bunch of bullshit, this doesn't work. Oh no, there's, there's a solution. You get a second one of these guys. So let's, you hook this up, but now you got one wire and you got one plug. Well, Rode's got a, they got solutions for everything. You got this right here. This is the SC11 splitter cable. So let's go ahead and add this up and then we'll see how, uh, how this starts working. We're back. Now we've got them both going. I should be able to switch from one channel to the other. Let's, let's get this off so I can tell which is which. Oh. Okay, so now as you can see, I've got audio coming out of this guy right here very nicely. Very nice audio here. And we've got audio coming out of this guy right here. So clean audio. No buzzing sound. If I had two people, this is probably not the best way to do this. So at this point, problem solved. I mean, yeah, someone could argue that, well, I mean, you had to buy all this extra stuff to make it work. Well, let's be honest, this, I mean, this clearly this system is designed to be used on camera with this 3.5 millimeter jack into the camera. It's designed to be affordable and high quality for people to use it on the go. When, when you're talking setting something up like this, I mean, so you might wonder what I'm setting this up for. So what I wanted to be able to do was kind of have an audio station like this that's wireless. I'll explain it to you. So I can set this up on a stand, have a guy over here monitoring audio when I go on a professional job, and this can be the audio station. This guy, whether it's here, if I have it on a cage or in a case or whatever, this is like my audio setup. Have a person monitor it, hit record. The camera doesn't have to be you know, I'm using an A7S III. It's not a very big camera. There's, I don't want to hook all this crap to it. So what I've, the way I've got it set up right now is I've got 
the wireless go to the left and right channels so I can have two people labbed up. Then I've got my original wireless go. I've got one of the microphones here attached coming from the line out. And then I've got the receiver on top of the A7S III. So that's the only small little footprint on there going in. So essentially what I've got is I've got the recording here to the SD card that's high quality use the, using these XLR inputs. I've also got the backup recording that's recording here on the new transmitters, Rode Central app. That problem's been solved, so I'm, I'm confident that I can download these things. Then I've got another backup on the camera that hopefully has got decent audio that's usable as well. So I've got an SD card here, I've got an SD card there in the camera, and I've got the data that's on these, these transmitters that I could export as well. I feel like between all of that, hopefully I got some decent quality audio if I go on a professional job. Audio like gives me anxiety and freaks me out. I think I mentioned that in the comments in my last, last uh, video when one of the people asked me about it. it just, I feel like I need so many backups because I'm scared if the audio is ruined, everything's ruined. It doesn't matter how good the image looks if you can't hear it. I think everyone knows that. That's why audio is so important. I'm very confident in this system now. Very confident in this wireless go to. I don't want to send it back. I can tell you now, I, I almost sent it back based on that first video. Okay, so full disclosure guys, Rode did send me these XLR adapters and the splitter cable because they were trying to help me with a the solution. They didn't ask for anything in return and they stated their primary concern was just to help ensure that I was satisfied with my new Rode Wireless Go 2. When I told them that I'd make a follow-up video about this situation, they were very clear. That, that was completely up to me if I wanted to make that video, and I'm free to say whatever I wanted about the pr products that they gave me or the effectiveness of this solution. And I just did this solution here live with you. You saw me open the box, and we did it right here. So there was no like no strings attached from Rode. They're like, we just want you to be happy. So this, along with the updates to the Rode Central app, I can comfortably recommend this new microphone system for anyone looking to get an affordable, high quality, dual wireless microphone system. Furthermore, the way Rode handled this problem, I can wholeheartedly recommend that you look at their products first for all your audio needs. I mean, I am shocked at the way. I can't recall ever being treated so well by a company the way that they treated me. I mean, I'm not some big YouTuber. I got, what, 1,500, 1,600 subscribers. I don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I don't have hundreds of thousands of views, but that didn't matter to the team at Rode. They didn't care. They repeatedly made me feel like I was their only concern and all that they seemed to care about was that I was satisfied with my new microphone. I can say without a doubt that they have accomplished their goal and I am 100% satisfied with this microphone. In addition to that, they gained a customer for life and they have now got an unpaid spokesperson for their brand. I 100% will back their products just for the way they treated me alone. Well, I certainly hope this video was helpful. If any of you guys are having a similar issue with your new Rode Wireless Go 2, before you send it back, consider maybe adding some of these things, you know, and, and seeing if it'll work for you. If you're going to use it on an external recorder like this, this is probably going to be the best solution. So I would definitely recommend you give this a try before you write these off and say they're not good for you. I know the few of the people in the comments in my last video said they were having some similar issues, but this has solved the problem. You guys heard it for yourself here. We did it together. We opened these boxes right here and dug in. And it's working. Well, as always, thanks for checking out my video. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing if you found some value in this and maybe checking out some of my other videos on my channel of other gear reviews I've done. Well, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.